everyone. So as I prepare to work on my next piece, I thought that I would just give everyone a rundown as to the supplies that I use uh, in order to create uh, all my artwork. So the first and most important thing that I use is Strathmore Bristol Smooth Surface 300 Series Paper. Uh, pretty much this is a uh, basic paper that you could pick up at uh, any art supply store, including Michael's if you're in a pinch. Uh, although the best place that I find to pick this up is at dickblick.com. Uh, the prices are usually half of what you could pick it up at Michael's. So if you need paper, I recommend you go there. Or like I said, Michael's is good in a pinch. Um, the smooth surface is exactly that. Uh, it's paper I prefer because I use rapidograph pens to ink as opposed to a brush, which uh, would probably be better on a vellum surface, which is more a textured surface paper. Uh, but all my artwork is usually on smooth surface Bristol. So the next thing I obviously use is uh, pencils and eraser. Uh, again, my pencil is pretty basic. Uh, this one happens to be a Graph Gear 500 by Pentel. Okay, my camera is not really focusing on it, but um, pretty much any mechanical pencil will do. Uh, this uses a 0.5 lead, and uh, at this moment I'm using a 2B lead inside uh, the pencil. Uh, like I said, any pencil will do. Um, I've used regular number two pencils to, uh, to, to sketch out my pieces, so it, it doesn't necessarily have to be a mechanical pencil, just whatever you're comfortable with. Um, and I usually use two, two types of erasers. I use a standard Statler uh, white eraser. Um, I go through these a lot, so I'm constantly buying these um, at Staples and wherever I can find them. And then for finer eraser details, here is a Pentel click eraser, which is actually pretty convenient when the big eraser uh, won't fit, or at least it'll take up w way too much of my lines that I need erased. So this is, this is really good for detail erasing. So when my pencils are done and the piece is ready to be inked, uh, these are my most used tools. These are my Koinor Rapidographs, and uh, the sizes that I use, this is a double zero, a number two, a number three nib, and a number four nib. Um, most artists, they actually get kind of horrified to see that I use these pens. Um, most artists, they use either brushes or, or nibs or uh, crow quill pens. Uh, and But I decided uh, long ago that these were uh, a lot more comfortable for me to use. It gives me a lot more control over the lines that I want. Um, and I just like the way they feel. I mean, in the end, um, the tools you use are just that. They're just tools. Uh, there is, there are no professional tools. Uh, they're just whatever you're comfortable using. Um, in the end, it's not the tools that make the talent. Uh, I have done inked pieces with a ballpoint pen and, you know, it just all depends on how you use it, not what you use. So if you're using what some would call an unorthodox tool, just keep going. Because in the end, doing your artwork should be about what you're comfortable with and what gives you the results that you want. The only thing that I would say about using rapidographs, though, is that they're extremely messy. Uh, they have to be constantly cleaned or else uh, they get ink all over the place and you have to use the exact ink that is made for these pens. I, in a, I had a situation where I ran out of ink and I used uh, Higgins Black Magic, uh, which is a different brand from this, and the ink was horrible. It, it, it didn't set down correctly. It was see-through. I couldn't get it really black-black like 
this ink. So in the end, I had to go out and buy the proper ink anyway to use it. Uh, but, you know, it, it, in the end, even with the Higgins ink, I was still able to accomplish what I needed to do. Um, and this little thing just that I always have handy, this is the key to take the nibs off. These nibs are constantly getting clogged. Like I said, they're kind of, uh, they're kind of messy. So this is how, you know, you remove the nib to, to uh, fix any clogs, put in ink, actually you put in ink from down here. But you see, I'm, I'm already getting ink on myself. So that's why also along with the pens, I constantly have to have tissue because like I said, if, if you don't, you're going to get ink on places in the artwork that you really don't want to get ink on. So you got to be careful with these and make sure that you take care of them. But in the end, no matter what, oh, you see right there, more ink. That just goes to show you that's why this map board looks the way it does. But in the end, as much as trouble that they cause, I find the end result well worth it. So I am more than willing to trade beautiful artwork for ink-covered hands. So the next thing that I rarely use, but I keep on hand anyway, are these um, Zig Millennium liners. Uh, they're they're kind. They're just marker versions of the nibs that I use for their pitiographs. And I use these, and it's a, a number three, a number five, and a number eight. Again, you can pick these up at Michael's. Um, I use these when for some reason my pens, my pitiographs poop out, and I can't get a replacement nib for them. Uh, at the time. So at least with these, I use these as a replacement so I can finish my piece uh, without really affecting the line work that much. Actually, a lot of times you can't even tell that I'm using these pens instead of a rapidograph. Uh, the only thing is though, it's like I don't like using these pens long term on an entire piece. Uh, the way the nibs are, for some reason the pens make me press down on the paper to get the ink the way to, to flow and I end up cramping up my hand uh, which is not good <laughs> if you depend you know if this is what you know I need my hands to function properly so I use these very rare occasion the next thing that I use all the time on my artwork is actually kind of controversial um, this is a sharpie fine point and a sharpie ultra fine point um, it's just your standard permanent marker you pick up at Staples and everywhere. Um, the reason they're considered controversial is that um, a lot of artists feel that technically you should not be using these on actual artwork. Um, if the artwork is not stored properly, the Sharpie has the Sharpie ink has a tendency to bleed and turn brown and soak through the artwork. But again, that's if you don't store your art, artwork properly. Um, I've used Sharpies on all my artwork um, for 20 plus years and I have pages that are 20 plus years old and I have no problem with uh, the Sharpie ink bleeding or turning brown. So like I said, it really depends on how you store your artwork with the Sharpie. Um, I have no problem with it. Of course, your mileage may vary. Um, I can only go by my experience using a Sharpie. So. I use it. I don't have a problem. If you don't have a problem with it, go ahead and use it. Like I said, the, the tools are not the talent. Uh, and that's pretty much it. If it works, use it. This last pen that I use uh, for white detail work is a Uniball Signo white pen. I'm not sure if it's considered a gel pen, but the ink in this is really opaque. Um, it works really well. Um, it's probably the best white pen that I've come across. It, it sits on black ink 
without turning gray, which is really important. I've used other white pens where it starts off nice and as it dries, it disappears into the black ink. So this is really good for um, embellishing black backgrounds, um, just white outlining, whatever you need white ink for. Um, this pen uh, is from Japan. Um, I'm sure you can get it in the United States. I bought a whole box uh, rather inexpensively on Amazon. I think it was 12 pens for $12 or $8. I, I don't quite remember. Um, the only thing is that I had to wait a month to get them because they were coming straight from Japan. But the pens work so well, uh, they're well worth the wait. Uh, so if you can find it in, if you can find it at your local store, uh, pick them up. If not, just buy the box on Amazon, especially if you use these white pens a lot, they're well worth it. So this has got to be the oddest uh, tool that I use, that I use constantly. Uh, this is a rolling ruler, the amazing rolling ruler to be exact. Uh, I'm sure some of you remember the uh, as seen on TV infomercials for this. Well I can attest this thing works. Um, what it does is that it has some wheels on the back and you're able, when you put it down, you're able to just roll down and create straight lines uh, without having to keep measuring and stopping. Very handy. Um, I, I use this for every piece that, that I'm doing. It, it's like, it's, it's rare I pull out a standard T-square to have to do pieces. It's, this is just, this is a lifesaver. It's like I use it all the time, um, and I use it for inking, for speed lines. It's it's perfect because all you all you got to do is just roll it and make your lines, and you don't have to do anything. Um, I know it has an option where you can you're able to turn it and make arced lines, uh, but I, I haven't tried that. I just prefer keeping it simple, keeping everything straight, and um, you unscrew here and the piece actually comes off, which also makes it easy for me to ink. So I can use it both ways as both a standard straight edge and a rolling straight edge. Like I said, this is worth it. Um, I don't know if this particular brand is made anymore, but I do know that Statler uh, made a smaller version of it that I did purchase. It's half the size, but the size was a bit awkward. I don't know if they make a full-size version, but I would think that if Statler made a half-size version, they would have a full-size version. Um, either way, I highly recommend this, as weird as it is. And of course, where would you keep your supplies except in a Little Mermaid cup? Because you just have to. All my tissues. And a random nail file, but that's because, you know, if you need to trim your nails, it's always good to have a nail file on hold. And another thing with the rapidographs, you never store them in a cup or anything. You have to keep them flat or else what happens is that all the ink starts to pool, starts to leak and pool in the caps, which does not make it fun when you go to use them and all this ink splatters all over the place. So that's my really quick uh, rundown of all the supplies that I use. I hope you found it uh, useful. And I'll see you on the next video with another inking demo. Thank you.